Hi, my name is Dr. Frederick Edward Fabella, and I will be discussing the foundations of quantitative research, part four, the need for a theory. Okay, so let us begin. So let us go back to variables. So we've had our discussions about variables uh, in previous uh, lectures. And uh, for now, let us just consider one variable. Okay. Let's take, for example, the variable of students' grades. Of course, students' grades can be high, they can be low. And let's designate this as one variable, variable one. And you might be curious as to uh, whether or not something affects students' grades. No, what affects students' grades? Of course, there are many possible factors that affect or influence students' grades. And if we are to study all of them, our research will never end, okay? So, of course, if you want to research what affects students' grades, you cannot possibly study all the factors, okay? So, what do we do? We will need to narrow our approach to this question. We must fine-tune our study. To do this, we will have to confine our consideration to just one factor for now, okay? But there are so many factors to choose from, so we have to choose which one. The choice of factor or variable that affects students' grades will depend on the theory that you will use. Okay, so what is the role of the theory? Okay, so when you have variables, variable one and variable two, the role of the theory is that it connects your two variables, okay? it also offers an explanation as to why one variable influences the other. We use theory to focus our attention on a small subset of all potential explanations on one particular viewpoint. Okay, so that's the role of your theory. Okay, so what is a theory? One of the major purposes of a theory is to provide an answer to the question, why? A theory is not just any explanation. A theory comes into being when a series of ideas come to be held and accepted by a wider community of people. All right, so that's uh, the role of the theory. Okay, so let's uh, go back to our example. So let's uh, have students' grades as one of our variables. Now. Um, let's try to figure out what affects students' grades. Um, it can be anything, but let's try to focus on the student himself. Okay, what is it about the student that could affect this, his grades? Has it something to do with it with his personality? Could it be something like uh, his sense of self-efficacy? Okay, and if we are going to link these two variables, student self-efficacy and students' grades we will need a theory. And uh, the most appropriate theory that we can use is the self-efficacy theory, okay? And this self-efficacy theory will link our two variables and offer an explanation as to why students' grades are affected by the student's sense of self-efficacy, okay? So what is the importance of the theory? The theory is the basis for your statement of the problem. The theory offers you a guide in your methodology and how you will approach the problem. And your theory will also help you interpret your findings once you're done with your data gathering, okay? But what is a theoretical framework? So a theoretical framework is your presentation of a theory that explains a particular problem. It is not based on your suspicions alone. Okay, so it, it offers a basis, not just something that you imagined. Okay, uh, the theoretical framework identifies a plan for investigation and interpretation of the findings. Okay, and the theoretical framework is how you conceptualize the nature of your research problem, its basis, and the analysis, you will choose to investigate that problem. Okay, so that ends my discussion about theory 
If you want to stay updated with my upcoming lectures, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Prof. Eric F. Thank you very much.